Hi everyone. I need to make a really important update on these Purim tables and March 26 tables. And I'm also going to go ahead and um, show these tables on the new planet that I had as well since I'm doing this. But originally I wasn't even going to make a video today. I was actually thinking about just making a quick video just pointing out that the Purim table had the word sign in it which means that that doesn't necessarily mean that anything would happen on Purim that it was just a sign I just wanted to point that out and I don't think when I originally did the video on Purim that I had realized that there was going to be a blood red moon that day or or I guess it was early in the morning is when it happened um, so I don't know if it was considered night or day but in any case it, the sign was a, a lunar eclipse that occurred or a red moon or blood red moon and I tried it putting in the word blood and that didn't come up but the word red did come up and as you can see here the word moon actually touches right against the word sign so it definitely seems to be speaking of a sign in the moon and you see the word moon here with the letters m o o n and it touches right against the word sign which comes at an angle here and it all crosses right through the word purim and it also makes connection with the word star up here in the pink which touches and crosses against the word Purim. Well, it doesn't cross against it, but it's like right above it, kind of just scathing the top of the word Purim over here. And it does connect with the word moon. So apparently this sign in the moon was a sign for perhaps an incoming star, but not necessarily on Purim, but the sign definitely occurred on Purim with the red moon and you see the word red over here so I just thought I would point that out but in the process I for some reason I was looking for this table right here that had the word wrath up here at the top and the word March coming right in the middle at an angle and I'm not sure why I was looking for this table but as I was searching for it because as you can see here I had a lot of other tables on March 26 Th these were all in a matrix and then I, this was a different matrix and then these were all you know three other matrixes here so there was quite a few different matrixes that had the word March and I couldn't remember which one had the word wrath up here at the top so I was trying to find it for some reason and instead I pulled up I believe it's over here this this one right here that was coming up in Isaiah 51 which I actually just glossed over I didn't really pay too much attention to this one and in the video I just kind of glossed over it because I hadn't really reviewed the the scriptures or the tables very well before I started making the video and even now I mean I just saw this just a, a little while ago so it's not like you know all these things are just kind of jump out at me it's not like I'm pouring over these tables searching for information it just just pops out you know when I pull it up and so I accidentally pulled this one up and I noticed that well as you can see it has the word fury right there at the bottom the other one had the word wrath at the top of the word March and this one has fury which means wrath right at the bottom of the word March but the first thing I noticed when I pulled this one up is right over here it says Jehovah shall return right there that's the first thing I noticed when I looked at this and it was right next to the word March 
And again, I don't know if that means something's going to happen in March. I'm not sure if perhaps uh, March is a countdown. And that's something that was suggested by Kurt Jurgens that maybe perhaps there's a countdown that starts in March and goes through to May. And, and that is a possibility because if you look at this video that I've done over here, let me try to pull it up, the second advent and, and Obama the Beast, this video right here. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should really watch this video. But over here, right next to the word Advent, you can see the word Advent right here. It had two dates that were just in the plain text. And those two dates were right here next to the E. It says first day of the month. And this is talking about the first month because it says in the first month, the first day of the month. So it sounds like that's the beginning of a time frame because there's a second date given over here where it says in the second month on the 7 and 20th day of the month. And you know right above that it says behold the face. So it may be that you know we don't get to behold the face of Jesus until the second month. I, I don't really know which would be Savan, which correlates with um, right around June 6th or 7th is what it was on our calendar when Jerusalem was recaptured. But on the Hebrew calendar, it was actually the 20th, 28th day of ER which is um which correlates with june I, i'm sorry if i said savan savan is when pentecost the, and it's one week before pentecost so the countdown could be leading up to pentecost or it could be leading up to jerusalem day which was the 28th day of er and of course the 28th day starts on the sunset the 27th and the second date that's given right here is the second day, I mean the second month on the 27th day of the month, which would be Jerusalem day. And that's one week before Pentecost. So it could be uh, just giving us a countdown as Kurt Jurgens had suggested, you know, from March to May or perhaps even June. I mean, we don't know the day or the hour. It could even be in April. It could be during the the Passover that's observed by the Jews in Israel. I mean, that would be probably the most ideal time for someone who wanted to do an attack, to attack, you know, on the day when the Jews are actually observing a high holy day or a, a feast day during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And over here, which is another really amazing thing about this table, is you actually see the word Passover. And I didn't even have to, I don't even know if I even searched for Passover on this table. I just noticed it earlier, you know, just before I did this video. I, I noticed the word Passover right here, and usually I put in the words pass and over in order to get Passover to come up. And as you can see, it's all one word right here in the table. So, you know, it's definitely making reference to Passover. And I want to go ahead and read all of these scriptures because I think it's very important. And like I said, I had just glossed over this table, which I think might be actually one of the most important ones that has to do with March and a star and also because it mentions the word wormwood 
and it also mentions a headstone which would be Jesus he's the the, the head of the corner or the, the headstone of, of God's temple and so you see the word stone up here in the green at the top and just want to see what else is here and okay, and the word head is here in the yellow and then wormwood we well, see wood over here in the green crosses March and okay and worm is right here crossing stone okay Jesus is a headstone and you see worm crossing the word stone right here the letters W O R M and then wood is down here so and then of course Jesus when he comes back in fury he's going to come as a lion and you see lion right right here touching against the word fury so and then like I said you see a direct reference to Passover right here and if once I read the the table the the scriptures in the in the matrix of this table you'll see that the the scriptures make a direct reference to Passover as well so I'm gonna go ahead and read that right now and I'm gonna start over here with verse 7 in Isaiah 51 and it says hearken unto me ye that know righteousness the people in whose heart is my law fear ye not the reproach of men neither be ye dismayed at their revilings for the moth shall eat them up like a garment and the worm shall eat them like wool but my righteousness shall be forever and my salvation unto all genera generations and salvation is Jesus or Yeshua okay just wanted to point that out okay and then it goes on awake awake put on strength O arm of Jehovah awake as in the days of old the generations of ancient times is it not thou that didst cut Rahab in pieces that didst pierce the monster is it not thou that driedest up the sea this is a direct reference to Passover the waters of the great deep that made us the depths of the sea away for the redeemed to pass over and over here is is the word Passover so it's making a direct reference to the first Passover when the sea was dried up the Red Sea and the ransomed of Jehovah shall return the ransom would be us those who well Jesus died for all people so all of those who receive God's free gift are the ransomed because Jesus paid the price and the ransomed of Jehovah shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing shall flee away and this is making a direct reference to Revelation where it says that there, there's not going to be any more tears and all the tears will, will be dried up so that there will be no no tears in heaven this is a direct reference to the book of Revelation and then it goes on to say I even I am he that comforteth you who art thou that thou art afraid of man that shall die and the son of man that shall be made as grass and has forgotten Jehovah thy maker that stretcheth forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and fears continually all the day of the fury of the oppressor okay so God's saying you know why are you afraid of the oppressor that would be Gog that's that's making ready to destroy when he maketh ready to destroy and where is the fury of the oppressor the captive exile shall speedily be loosed and he shall not die and go down into the pit neither shall his bread fail this is talking about Israel Israel is the the exile that that's been held captive but that's not going to be for much longer and I'm gonna to have to end this one here and I'll pick up in the next video